Good evening to everyone out there watching today. Today is August 21st, 2017, and I'm Kevin Graves. All of us here at Veterans Voices want to welcome you back to another episode, a live monthly talk show focused on elevating the voices of military vet veterans and engaging with issues they and their loved ones face in coming home. Nathan Johnson couldn't be here tonight, so we invited Kira Sirna, Sirna back on the show to co-host. Thank you, Kira, for being here tonight. Thanks, Kevin. Tonight, we will have the honor of displaying the shadow box of Korean War veteran, General Dan Helix. Thank you, General Helix, for allowing us to honor your service by having it on our set tonight. If you'd like your memorabilia featured on our show, let us know and we'll display it on our set. Tonight's episode is titled, The Heart of a Youthful Spirit, Growing Wiser in the Veteran Community. Our show will focus on what it means to stay young, grow wiser, and live healthy as military veterans. We will talk with veterans who have taken the afternoon of their lives by storm through finding purpose, honoring their comrades, connecting with the community, and taking advantage of benefits available to them. We will hear their stories of service and transition and gain insight into how they have cultivated resilience and appreciation for life as they age. We will also learn more about the benefits that can support us. Some include VA pension, VA pension, transportation assistance, hospice, financial guidance, and CalVet veteran homes. An important part of having this conversation is including viewers' voices. We are inviting you to call or write in to the show and participate, and you can do so by phone, email, anonymous chat, or Facebook. We also broadcast our show on Facebook Live, so go to our page at Veterans Voices One and chat instantly with our team. Now I would like to welcome our guest, Lou Kern and Jeff Jewell. Welcome. Thank you. And hey, thanks for having us. Good evening, gentlemen. So Lou, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you and how you have dedicated your life. What is your passion? Well, right now my passion is uh, becoming a, a spokesman as part of a group uh, for veterans health care. As many people probably don't know, there's a lot of money being spent, millions, um, in Washington, D.C., denigrating the veterans health care system. Literally, this is what some organizations do. And uh, there's nobody advocating for them and educating other veterans about them. So uh, myself and some friends started a nonprofit, uh, ffvhc.org, Friends for Veterans Health Care. And that's what we're doing. You know, and, and how does that give you, per, or, or, or uh, I don't know what your previous career was, but as you decided to retire, how was it that you came about finding, finding these, this, this road or this, this purpose? That's kind of a, you know, when I retired, I, I was self-employed. Uh, and you don't, you're not self-employed and successful unless you have a pretty big sense of urgency. And so when I tried to retire, basically I just started drinking more. You know, it's like, and then the wife would come home and, hi, honey, <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I, would, I, mean, I didn't go on benders or anything like that, but still, I mean, I didn't know what to do with myself. That's the point. And so I put myself in video school because I wanted to uh, capture the stories of guys that I served with in Vietnam. Not so much for public dissemination, but for their grandkids and their great-grandkids. Hey, this is who these guys were. And a lot of those stories have never been told, not just about my, my guys that I served with, but a lot of guys in, in Vietnam. And uh, as you both know, half of us or more are dead. We're gone. We moved on. What branch did you serve and when did you serve? Uh, I was in the Marine Corps mm -hmm. in um, 1966, 1967, and 1968. Yeah. Well, welcome home. Well, thanks. So, Jeff, uh, you've been a guest of ours before, but tell us a little bit about, again, about who you are and, um, and, and your interesting story. That well, um, <clears throat> I'm Jeff Jewell. I'm the director of the Concord Vet Center uh, here, and uh, we work with uh, combat veterans and their families. And um, I'm, I was here a couple of years ago, and uh, I happened to see myself afterwards uh, and how I really looked. and, and uh, uh, I had probably been the heaviest that I've been in my life. And so after that, I was inspired. And I, 
I felt that I needed to, I wanted to stick around. I'm 62. I want to be here for veterans going forward and I want to work a few more years um, before I retire like Lou did here. And, uh, and so I, uh, I lost 82 pounds and, and as part of that inspiration, uh, when I exercise uh, three or four times a week, I always exercise for a different cause. And I think I've really f sort of gotten a calling. Uh, I have, a, I think I have a, about 100 or so Gold Star families who follow me online. Uh, I'm really, uh, uh, I really appreciate them and, and I appreciate their sacrifice and, and what the families have been through. Uh, but I also appreciate and uh, remind everyone of the sacrifice and service of these young men uh, that have passed away and the global war on terror and and women um, absolutely you know and so uh you know it's i i feel it's a real calling for me uh uh and uh, i hope to be doing what i'm doing i love working with combat veterans their families uh where we do bereavement counseling uh and I'll, we also do military sexual trauma and by the way kira is one of our best counselors here um and she and we offer services uh, in the area around Solano County uh, and in Contra Costa County um, uh, for our combat veterans and their families. How long have you been with the VA? So I've been with the VA since 2001. Okay. Uh, and uh, I started at the Oakland Vet Center. Uh -huh. I always like to say uh, baptism by fire. Yeah. It was a, a, a couple of years there in downtown Oakland. Uh, and uh, it was really a, a learning experience for me. I, prior to that, I was a veteran service officer in Solano County for 10 years. And I'm a former postal employee. So I know what it means when somebody says I'm going postal. Um, I understand that. Uh, I was a carrier for, uh, in Pittsburgh and in Fairfield wow. uh, here in California. And of course, uh, seven and a half years in the Air Force uh, where I was crew chief on C-5s. Uh, flew for, I flew for uh, a couple of years. Uh, I got 350 flying hours. That's my claim to fame. Well, That's I want to just, yeah. as, a, as a Gold Star parent, I want to uh, tell you how much we appreciate what you've done for us in a lot of different ways, but especially that you post these, uh, these uh, motivational um, pieces on your Facebook page where you're, where you're always keeping the memories of our loved ones alive, because that's really what it's about, is honoring the fallen and never, never forgetting. So I just want to personally thank you for the other Gold Star families that, um, yeah. for what you do. Yeah, and I'd like to say I'd like to continue that. And uh, um, if you contact me on Facebook, uh, I'm there under Jeffrey Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. Um, I'd be glad <laughs> to honor your family member. So I'd love to hear from Gold Star parents because I generally like to ask permission before I, and then I do a little bit of research and, and talk a little bit about uh, their sacrifice and service and, and, and about the family. So I'd love to hear from you. Great. Yeah. And so Lou, your work benefits veterans and um, also I guess us who work at the VA as well. Um, how would you say that the work that you're doing right now helps you as you're in retirement stay involved, um, have a sense of purpose, um, a sense of identity? How would you, what would you say that it, uh, how it benefits you? I think that somewhere, I heard somebody say this, you know, we all have like epiphanies in our life, right? And, and somebody said, if you want to love something, give to it. And it just kind of struck me, you know, and I thought about that and I thought about that and I thought about that. And then it started to make perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Like there's a, there's a big part of we human beings, why, why did I go risk my life in combat? Why did I do that? You know, I didn't want to be John Wayne, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't, that wasn't my thinking. I wanted to be part of something. I wanted to prove that I had what it took, you know. Um, but there was also the giving element, and I didn't recognize that as a younger person. You know, it just slowed, then you have children, and then you're saying, Why? boy, I put all this energy into this, you know, change of diapers and, and then high school sports, and, you know. So it kind of slowly dawned on me that if you want to love something, give to it. So find something to give to. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 the flowers in your garden will bloom. It's very true. Yeah. Often when we give, we get so much back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, Jeff, do you, how does your um, workout routines um, and staying active, how does it benefit you? Well, it, it's certainly uh, uh, what I've learned is that uh, uh, going forward that I'm not going to be able to help veterans unless I take seriously in taking care of me. 
And so one of the ways to do that is, is I had to make some lifestyle changes. And so, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of uh, uh, how I eat, when I eat, how much I eat, uh, exercise, uh, I looked at my sleep patterns, uh, I tried to look at my whole, my whole self. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I didn't like what I saw. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so uh, I've been able to maintain my uh, where I'm at for the last year, and I hope to keep doing that going forward. And one of the things I think that really motivates me is being able to connect with all these great service organizations, veterans groups, and different th that I uh, talk about uh, on my Facebook posts, and also uh, the Gold Star families. Uh, my gosh, Kevin. You know, and talking just about your son Joey and, his, and the foundation and how resilient family members are like yourself, despite the tragedy and everything that you've done going forward. We appreciate um, and I, that and I wanna, much. And I want to keep putting that positive message out there, kind of like what Lou is trying to do uh, with, with the VA. You know, working for the VA, I see miracles every day. 99% uh, of the people that work, work, work for the VA work miracles every day, but you don't hear about that because they just continue on, they do the work, and they're in the background, and they don't seek any kind of fame. Uh, they just do their job. Uh, and I see that every day, but you don't hear about that. And so, um, uh, Lou, I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, I think you guys, gentlemen bring a great balance to the show, uh, mind and body together, and how you can take your experience in the military, take your passion for your comrades in both cases, and make a make an extended career out of it. Jeff, you're still doing it, but you've extended your career, Lou, by doing by advocating. And uh, I want to commend you for that. I think that's awesome. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, want to thank you both for being on the show with us here tonight. And uh, before we uh, continue on with, uh, with our guests, we want to take you to a short clip of a documentary called The Longest Road. Uh, this documentary was filmed uh, in Kurdistan, Iraq. Um, I happen to have been privileged enough to be there for some of the filming of this, and it talks about the uh, atrocities that ISIS has brought to the Yazidis and Christians, uh, and it's a fine documentary. Please enjoy the trailer. If I think about it too much, it comes back. the people forever and think they're just going to lie down and take it. We Americans were watching on the news this mass exodus of these ethnic minorities. And then we're talking about astronomical numbers, 1.5 to 2 million refugees. Many of these people are doctors and lawyers and electricians and engineers and professional people. What is their future going to look like? I'll never forget the looks in their eyes. This one lady was saying, don't film us if you're not going to do anything about it. We have a great many of humanitarian groups, non-governmental organizations, who are trying to do the right thing. My name is Richard Campos, 63 years old. I was deployed in 2003. We were part of the invasion force. I saw on the news atrocities that ISIS was doing in Iraq. I just knew I had to go back. This gentleman travels back and forth to Kurdistan, trying to bring whatever humanitarian supplies he can. You know, Richard's been doing this. This is not his first trip. We lost almost 4,500 brave men and women. I think about that a lot. For whatever reason, we left it open-ended where it became like the Wild West. People all over the world, they just, we have this sense of, all right, there's a problem, let's go fix it. This is a need, and we will regret it if we don't come to the aid of these people. We may not change our situation overnight, but if we don't start somewhere, then we'll never get anywhere. Our main purpose in life is to help others. And if you can't, don't hurt. I kind of live by that. I just try to do better.
tonight we are talking about what it means to live with a youthful spirit as a military veteran. If you have a question or comment, give us a call, email, or anonymous chat. We would love to hear from you. Now we wanted to shift the conversation and speak with Noah, Noga Wellner Kessler and Elaine Welch. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Elaine, tell us a little bit about your organization, about yourself and about your organization. Well, I'm not a vet. I want to start off by saying that I come from a Gold Star family and a family full of veterans. Um, tonight, our president was talking about uh, sending people over to Afghanistan. I just found out my niece is one of those people, so uh, she will keep her in your prayers, please. Um, no, I, um, veterans have always been near and dear to my heart because of so many veterans being in my family. And I currently run a program called, an um, organization called Mobility Matters. We're all about mobility management and keeping people mobile, particularly as they age, which we're all doing. Um, I always think of every time I go do something for an hour, regardless of the age I was when I came in here, or you were, or you were, we're all, all going to be an hour older when we leave here. It's, it's a perpetual process. It's not stopping. And for me, uh, one of the things that I found that was most difficult for people as we age was mobility. Getting out of your home, staying engaged in the community, getting the medical care you need, uh, food, toilet paper, things we just take for granted. So about uh, in 2005, I started a program called Rides for Seniors, and I'm very happy to tell you, effective Ju June 1st of this year, we started a Rides for Veterans program, where we are recruiting veterans to drive veterans, older vets driving younger ones, younger ones driving older ones, anyone who wants to really come out and help us, including people who are not veterans, who'd like to help us get veterans where they need to go. We don't have an age requirement on it, just a classification of disability or just being so elderly it's difficult for you to drive or you can't get where you need to go. So Elaine, I can really speak to the fact of how important your organization is. When I first started interning at the Vet Center, um, I was assigned a World War II vet who lived in the East County um, and he had uh, mobility difficulties and wasn't able to come to counseling in Concord due to that. Um, and I see a lot of my clients um, who have a hard time getting to their medical appointments, to their counseling appointments, um, because, you know, just whether it's physical mobilities or PTSD or high anxiety, whatever it may be, um, your program is a very, very important program that uh, really elimin eliminates that barrier to healthcare. And I can see some other a uh, assets there also in that um, if you have veterans helping veterans, the, the, the communication wow. starts there. The, the big, one of the big programs that we promote is you know, vets helping vets, the mentor program. So when that, that, that can naturally occur when you get into a car. I mean, it's, it's why cab drivers know everything, right? <laughs> so I, th I think that's a wonderful yeah. opportunity for vets to get to know vets also. Totally. Sorry. And one of the things we found, we keep saying we're so much more than a ride. This is about a relationship and an opportunity to have someone who's less fortunate and can't get where he or she needs to go, hook up with somebody who can. And by being a vet, if they can be a vet, I know my two brothers in Vietnam, when they start talking about their experience, Experiences, I almost want to back away because there's a conversation they have that is so personal and so mm -hmm. real to the two of them. And this is what we're hoping to do with our veterans, to absolutely. also bring that aspect. That camaraderie, absolutely, that's wonderful. Noga, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Absolutely. So uh, 30 plus years ago, I served in the military and the Army Medical Corps. And uh, 20 or so years ago, I started uh, my social work career uh, at the Vet Center in St. Louis and also working with uh, homeless veterans in St. Louis and then um, out here in the West in California and San Francisco and Oakland and then worked um, some years in hospital social work. And four years ago, uh, I started working in hospice and hospice was an opportunity for me uh, more than I imagined to really be able to have an opportunity to uh, be part of a care team caring for veterans. Um, the majority of veterans that come onto hospice have served in times of war, in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And 96% of veterans are in the community that we serve. So it's a, value, it's a 
priceless opportunity to be able to care for our veterans in the community. Um, and a number of things that, that we talked about, including mobility, many of our veterans are housebound, they're bedbound with, with challenges. And I just want to share a little bit about what hospice is. Yes. Hospice is a specialized care uh, for patients that have terminal illness. But it's much more than that. It is focusing on comfort. It's focusing on patient-centered care. It's focusing on supporting the family during this time. And it's really focused on an opportunity, not only for comfort and care, but an opportunity to gather family, to share stories, to, to participate at this time in the journey of our veteran's life um, in, in a way where hopefully pain and symptoms are well managed mm -hmm. and it's opportunity to, to uh, spend valuable time. And uh, four years ago, um, I started, I met Jeff, and we were, folk, we were talking about grief and bereavement, which is a very big subject, a very important subject in hospice, and how to work together in partnership um, in the area of grief and bereavement. And, we're, we're, and also mobility. Mobility, again, is, is such an important um, aspect of um, having a sense of still being able to participate and being part of even getting to uh, to uh, certain places that otherwise um, not able to. So working really together with other veteran organizations um, for um, supporting the veteran and the family. Great. And for our viewers, viewers out there who um, may benefit from this, can you explain how one would initiate the process if they have a loved one um, who may be eligible? Absolutely. So. Um, a patient that has a terminal illness where the prognosis um, is, is determined that if the prognosis is six months or less, if the uh, disease takes its normal course, um, has an opportunity to uh, receive hospice care. And hospice care oftentimes um, is covered 100% through Medicare, uh, sometimes through Medi-Cal. Um, and um, there is, uh, so, if a patient qualifies, then there is uh, an admission and then a care team that provides the care, oftentimes a medical doctor, a nurse, a <laughs> case manager, a social worker, uh, a spiritual care, and volunteer. So all working together as a team to provide care for a veteran, oftentimes at home where he's being cared for by his family or, or by her family or wherever that veteran may call home. Thank you so much. I, at this point, I want to. We have an email question that came in. I want to remind you all out there that uh, this show works because of you, and we want you to email or or chat with us anonymously or give us a call if you have any questions. The question here, I'm going to I'm going to direct this to you, Jeff. Uh, what suggestions do you have for veterans facing loneliness issues? Well, uh, <laughs> boy, that's a pretty broad question, but um, I would say to you that if if you're feeling lonely, the best thing you can do is kind of, if you're feeling like you're, you know, like you're inside that jack-in-a-box, are some of you old enough to remember how the, you, pull, you turn the crank and you just feel like your head's not going to pop out? Well, what you want to do is you want to get, you want to pop out, you want to get out. Uh, the best thing you can do for yourself is to look at, look at what you're doing every day, look at your patterns. Even if you have to force yourself to go out and go for a walk around the block, sometimes it's just that simple. It's putting one foot in front of the other, you know? And always, all of, I know almost every, all the viewers out there, you've all got that one friend that you can just talk to, you know? And even if they're uh, a long ways away, you know, give them a call, contact them on Facebook, pick up the phone. You know, picking up the phone is probably the best thing. But actually talk to family, talk to friends. Uh, you have to know that you're not alone. And if you're a veteran, just come on, walk on into the vet center. I mean, that's why we're there. Uh, and you never know what you might be eligible for. Um, I would like to suggest that, in fact, whoever it is that you choose to contact wants to hear from you. Sure. They don't want you to be lonely. They, don't, they won't think any less of the fact that you had to. It's not a confession. It's just a statement of fact. Yep. And they want to help you, and they, want, they don't want you to be lonely. 
Yeah. You know, they want you to have purpose. And it, it takes a little bit of courage to do that, I think, probably at some point. Yeah. But that's a, a, a great question, great open-ended question. And uh, I appreciate, uh, appreciate getting it. Again, we would encourage anybody that has any questions for us to please contact us here so we can address those questions on the air. Um, and Elaine, your program uh, doesn't uh, allows transportation. The new, the veteran program that you just established allows transportation for any purpose as long as the need is there. Is that correct? Well, let me just clarify that a little bit. We're rationing human resources right now. Okay. We just gave our hundredth ride uh, on the six weeks of the program. Very excited. I'm hoping. This time next year, we're talking about thousands of rides. We can't give enough. The need is endless. But in terms of what we're able to do right now, it's related to anything related to outpatient medical care, psychiatric care, dental care, or basic necessities like getting your food and the things you need. We haven't been able to add social aspects to it yet, although we will take you to the VA centers, but uh, we just don't have enough human resources. And that's one of the big reasons I'm here tonight. I'm hoping someone out there gets a spark in their heart to say, I wanna go do a ride once a week, once a month for somebody. And I would suggest that if you're lonely, that would be a great way not to be lonely. It's a super be of, way. Be of service <laughs> is an awesome way to uh, to get to get past that, and right. it's amazing what it will do for you. Um, there's so many statistics on volunteerism and what it does for the volunteer. There's it's a win-win all the way around. If I have just a second, I want to share a couple of things without any great detail. We have a brochure out. It's in many of the VAs. It's in a lot of different places where it looks red, white, and blue, and it says rides for veterans. Pick one up if you need them. Uh, our Facebook and our uh, website will be on at the end of this. We are not the only shop in town. We have uh, published under our Mobility Management Center funding, Way to Go Contra Costa. You can look up your city in here, find what transportation is available to you, much of it free. And the very last thing I wanted to show, and this should be on our website, and worry about the details on it, this is Elaine's famous pyramid with one size does not fit all. If you live in Contra Costa County and you're aging, you need to fit into one of these, whether it's drives yourself or all the way down here to the volunteer program. And if you give me a call or would like a presentation on this to your groups, just give me a call, I'd be happy to go over it with you in detail. Thank you. And so thank you ladies for that wealth of information on resources and for just speaking about your programs and thank you Jeff for your advice as well. Great. Veterans Voices is alive tonight and we're talking with our guests and you at home about aging and growing wiser as a military veteran. We're inviting you to call in and ask a question or share something about yourself related to the topic. Next up is an inf informational video on pension benefits for veterans. We will be right back. Did you know, if you are a disabled wartime veteran with limited income, you might qualify for a VA pension? Did you know monthly pension payments are tax-free and can be used for anything, including housing costs, bills, and personal expenses? Did you know, even if you receive other benefits or a member of your family earns some income, you might still qualify for a VA pension if you meet the income and net worth limitations? Veterans who have served with honor and their loved ones have earned the right to live with the dignity that comes with a level of economic security. VA pension supplements the income of wartime veterans who meet minimum service requirements and age or non-service connected disability requirements along with income and net worth limits set by law. Surviving spouses of wartime veterans who have not remarried and their dependent unmarried children may also benefit. Veterans or their survivors eligible for basic VA pension may qualify for higher payments if they require the aid of another person in performing activities of daily living or are housebound. A veteran's pension averages about $11,500 annually. A survivor's pension averages about $7,500 annually. Payments vary based on income and excludable expenses, such as health care. VA pensions can provide a level of income security to those who have given so much to their nation and to their survivors. Find out if you qualify. Explore VA today. For staying with us, tonight we are talking about healthy aging in the veteran community. If you have a question or comment, give us a call, email, or anonymous chat. 
please reach out by calling in or sending us a message, even anonymously. Now we want to talk about benefits and resources that can support us in our journey later in life with Jenna Galvan Spears and Elizabeth Fulgaro. Thanks, ladies. Hello, thanks for having us. Elizabeth, tell us um, about what you do and how, and some of your experience or some of your wisdom with regards to financial uh, stability. So when you're looking at all phases of life, money is a thread that just kind of weaves with us along in our life. And so at different points, it's good to discuss where you are financially, where you are in life, and how those two connect. A lot of times there's frustration that goes with money at the retirement time period. There's a lot of questions. There's some fear that can go with that. And my role as a financial coach to veterans is to be a free professional resource to just discuss with a veteran about their finances and their life and where they are and what's on their mind and what they'd like to do about it. It's a very special role. It's a government provided program where my job is not to tell them what to do because each person tends to know their life better than anybody else. But to just provide that place to talk with a professional about it. I have 35 years plus background in personal finance. And so can you um, tell our viewers what your program is called? This is the Financial Coaching Initiative sponsored by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It's been around for about two and a half years. And there's 40 of us nationwide who are veteran specific. And I'm the Northern California financial coach. And I was so happy because I refer to you, we, yes. we all do at the Vet Center. Um, so I was so happy to hear when your program um, opened up to all veterans and not just post 9-11 because you started off just serving post 9-11 vets, Correct. right? And you know, finances don't just affect you when you're transitioning out as a post 9-11 veteran, right? There's Absolutely. financial questions that go through our entire lifetime. And so the coaching initiative is there to walk with the veteran through whatever's going on and, and retirement or transitioning to another productive mm -hmm. afternoon of life is one of those times. Can you explain to our viewers what the difference is between a financial coach and a financial planner? Yes, that's an excellent question. So a financial planner or a financial counselor is really there about collecting your data, processing your data based on their experience and then giving you, giving you their advice for your life. The problem with that is it's their advice from their perspective. And while that professional angle is useful and the resource is useful, the coaching is specifically different and that my job is not to give advice, but to sit with the veteran and simply discuss, what do you want to talk about? I don't have a list of things they have to bring with them. I don't have a list of documents I need to see. The veterans know their circumstances. I'm there to talk it through with them. And there's very few people you can talk to about your finances, especially where it's safe and they're not safe selling something and that's another reason this program is so unique. I see veterans in person at various locations in Northern California and also about 70% of my sessions are by phone because a lot of my veterans can't get to me mm -hmm. for financial reasons or time. Before we get to Jenna, we have a specific question that would be for you here. It's, I am over 60 and have all of my IRA funds in stocks. Is this safe? So we just uh, talked about, it's a great question, very fair question, and it's a reason that you want to talk to a financial coach. Every single person is different. That is a wide open question. It can't be answered until the person looks at their personal finances, what their goals are, what their risk level, comfort levels are. There's a lot of questions that have to be answered first in order for the veteran to reach the point of saying, yeah, that's still good for me, or so, no, so I don't. So the answer to that question is, I Call can't me. answer that question. I need to talk, talk to a to coach. Me. Yes. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Jenna, you work directly downstairs here for the County Veterans Service Office, and um, you've been doing that for quite a while. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the benefits that you refer some of your senior veterans to that are offered uh, through the VA or through other resources that you have downstairs? Okay. Well, the primary one that everyone hears about is called aid in attendance or referred to as aid in attendance. That's actually the non-service connected pension program. To be eligible for that program, you have to have served at least one day during a period of wartime, uh, be over six, the age of 65 or considered permanent and totally disabled. Um, and that is a, me, uh, a needs-based benefit. So it is based on financials, um, less than $80,000 in net assets, and there are some annual 
uh, financials that you would have to be less than. The reason why that program, a lot of families will come in to learn about that program, and I want to just give a plug to County Veteran Service Offices at this point um, because it is a very complicated benefit and it's super helpful to have a representative sitting down with you, kind of walking you through the process, making sure all the forms are done correctly and just explaining it to you because it can get overwhelming. So one question that I often get from my clients is, um, can you collect from a VA pension and VA disability compensation at the same time? No, you cannot. Um, you will get the higher of the two benefits. So you cannot get both VA benefits. The VA will automatically award you the higher of the two. Okay. So whichever will be more profitable for, or not profitable. But. And, and I need to give a shout out to the County Veteran Service Offices too because CalVet relies heavily upon, uh, upon our County Veteran Service Offices. Uh, the, every county in the state of California is mandated to have one by legislation. And they kind of become the boots on the ground for the state to be able to make sure that veterans are being served. One of the benefits that we offer through the state, though, is our veteran homes. Uh, we have eight of them statewide. Our flagship is in Yachtville. Many of you have, that have driven up the wine trail have seen that big, beautiful white building on the side of the hill in Yachtville. That uh, was built during the Civil War. And um, it's our flagship. We have about 1,000 veterans that are there and that are being served. The only prerequisite to get into a veteran home in the state of California is that you are a veteran living in the state of California. Um, now, there's, uh, there's no financial responsibilities, but you give up some of your financial, a portion of your finances once you go into the home. Um, and it's a complicated, and this is where my shout out goes, it's a complicated application process. We have reduced it from 12 pages to seven pages, but it still needs to be, <laughs> co you have, need to be coached to work through it and, and understand the program. And we have immediate availability within the, uh, the CalVet home uh, uh, program uh, for domiciliary, especially for domiciliary. The key here is, and I would say this to the families, the key is get your loved one, get your parent, get your husband or wife or whatever into the veteran home while they're still domiciliary. Even though they don't feel like they want to leave their home, if they are going to, if there is a pattern of degrading health, if they can get in on their own and go and sign up and walk in, they were, are there for their entire life through SNF, through skilled nursing facilities, all the way through Alzheimer's. That's why it's difficult to get into those programs because people move up through, through into the different levels of care. And so if you can enter at the right time, um, when you can still get into them, it's, it's, it's an awesome benefit that the state of California offers. But again, see your county veteran service office when it comes to doing it. But it, if it, you're talking about a difference of maybe $8,000 a month to put somebody into Alzheimer's care. And in this case, it's basically free. It's a portion of your income. So it's an important benefit that as we age that we know is there uh, for the veteran community. And we as CalVet are very proud of that program. It's a big part of the budget and we thank the legislature for making that possible. Yes, that's a wonderful CalVet benefit. And I just want to say Jenna is wonderful too. I refer tons of people to her and always get thanks. great feedback from them. Oh, thanks. Can I just say one other thing? Sure. Um, one of the things that our office also does is we do work really closely with the clinic, with the social workers that work over at the VA clinic. So in the event that a family doesn't understand anything, we can team up with the social worker to ensure that all of the bases are covered. So, Great. Um, Lou, I have a question for you. Um, uh, as we're talking about aging and retirement and transitioning and, you know, that other, that other chapter in life, um, would you say that your military service benefited you right now as you're going through retirement? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I think I was probably pretty typical. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I got out of high school. You know, I went to college, but I didn't apply myself, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And uh, uh, looking back on it now, the, uh, uh, the Marine Corps was the best thing that ever happened for me. You know, it was very disciplined. It was very difficult, but it gave you a whole sense of pride. No, I can do this. No, I can do this. And I, I find that carries, you know, with me uh, throughout my life. Um, in in uh, Vietnam, I, I, what I did in the Marine Corps is called force reconnaissance. In the Navy, it's called SEALs. Mm -hmm. In the Air Force, it's called search and rescue. Uh, just an extensive amount of training. And then when you're at work, 
you're seven or eight or 20 miles into enemy territory. And you really have to be disciplined. And it, you have to, the, the voice in your head can't run your life. You, know, you have to understand that that narrative, you know, when, when, when I was a kid, it was always about the devils on one side and, you know, mm -hmm. guardian angels on the other. But there's this voice in your head, and when you're in a dangerous situation, and it doesn't have to be behind enemy lines, I mean, it could be any life-threatening situation, boy, that voice gets loud. And you know what? It's not you. That's really not you, that fear, you know, because you can live through it and you can survive it. And then you get out the other side and you go, whoa. Okay, well, what about this task? I bet you I could do that. So you're not afraid to kind of, as the poets say, throw your hat over the wall. So you're forcing yourself to go get it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it sounds like you were able to carry the strengths that you gained in the military into your civilian life and throughout your uh, career and into retirement. Yes, absolutely, and I never would have had that. Well, I don't know, but I know for sure I did get it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the military. And now I go back to reunions and there's this whole sense of, you know, it's a great way to be older. And, and I go with guys that I, I was, you know, fought with in Vietnam. And as we see from um, the question that was sent in um, a few minutes ago, a lot of veterans struggle with loneliness. How important is connection, staying connected to your uh, military comrades or other veterans um, as you're in this chapter in life? There's nothing like it. I didn't talk to anybody for um, 26 years after I got out. And there were two reasons for that. One is we had, because what we did was classified, top secret, we had to sign an agreement. We wouldn't talk to anybody for 25 years. The, the truth is we probably could have. Uh, the other part was that I ended up in the West Coast and the guys I was really close to were all on the East Coast and it was before the internet and I couldn't find them. And the war protest, you know, you didn't want to go around and tell people you meet a pretty girl at a party. Oh, well, you were in the military. Oh, were you in Vietnam? Oh, did you kill anybody? So right. pretty soon you just, no, I was a librarian in the Air Force. So, you know, you just, mm -hmm. you make it different. You have your cover story. Yes. <laughs> Every, every yeah. interesting cover story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you go and recover, you know, and you just, you, you pretend you can just put all that stuff aside. And uh, the truth is you can't. Uh, for me, I did for 15 years and then my whole world fell apart. And I didn't know what was going on. I was used to winning. And all of a sudden, it seemed like decisions I were making that were just bad decisions. And I had no idea why. And uh, I fortunately eventually got myself into a VA counseling and PTSD you know, counseling. And it sounds like connection is a huge part of that for oh, you. It's absolutely essential. Well, yeah. we thank you for that, Lou. We thank you for, uh, to our guests here. Uh, the, 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 the takeaway from this is uh, if you have financial questions for your life, get a financial coach. And if you don't know where to get one, go to your CVSO's office and they'll guide you there. So uh, thank you again for yeah. being with us. And uh, you've been wonderful guests. Thank you. Tonight we are talking about aging within the veteran community. We will be, we will be back after we show you our latest installment of A Veteran's Voice. Nathan Johnson had a chance to sit down with one of our friends, Andrew McGinnis. Please enjoy this video. Hi, this is Nathan Johnson from Veterans Voices. I'm doing a Veterans Voice segment with Drea McGinnis. Drea, thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. So this is our A Veterans Voice segment, and uh, you're a local resident here in the county, but you're a veteran as well. Tell us a little bit about your military service. I was in the United States Navy for about eight years. I was in the uh, Naval Construction Force, also known as the Seabees, uh, and I had a really great time. So the CBs are a very small unit. They have uh, a very specific purpose. What was your job within the CB unit? I Mostly logistics, okay. although being with the CBs, you have to be able to do other things because you do go everywhere with them. Mm -hmm. So I also was on mortar teams. You know, I um, worked in the chow hall for, you know, a little while. Mm -hmm. Um, poured concrete with some of the builders, wow. you know, in Bahrain, yeah. you know, we do have certain things that we have yeah. to do, but my main title was, you know, logistics or storekeeper. So you joined the Navy and somehow you ended up uh, even meeting your husband, Derek, in the Navy. Where were you guys stationed at the time? At the time we were stationed in uh, Port Wainimi, California, okay. which is uh, near Malibu, LA yeah. area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big CB headquarters, right? 
Well, the West Coast, yes. The West Coast, yep. okay. And, uh, and you were how far into the Navy at this time? What, what was... When we had met, oh, geez, two or three years. Yeah. In my service. Mm -hmm. So anything remarkable about your, your service up to that point? Was it a pretty easy transition from growing up in Yuma, Arizona to, to joining the military and having your job there? Or were there any challenges? The, my entire service was a challenge, yeah. honestly. It was uh, from boot camp on all of them good experiences. Yeah. I definitely grew from them. Yeah. was not what I expected. It was a lot harder than I had expected. Um, a lot of challenges as a woman, of course, but okay. good challenges that I'm, I'm glad that I was able to um, take part in. But a um, just a lot of um, overseas challenges mainly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And was your family proud of you or what was their response like to their daughter joining the military? They, they were very proud of me. Really? My father really? was in the Navy, you know, on the USS Enterprise. Okay. Yeah, so he was happy that I was following in his footsteps, I suppose. Yeah. My mother was too. Yeah. Yeah, very you said supportive. she was in the Air Force? My stepmom was. Stepmom was yes. in the Air Force. So mom was in the military, dad was in the military. Mm -hmm. A whole family of military service there. Yes, my uncle was in the Marine Corps during Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Oh, remarkable. Yeah. So is this something that you just were exposed to throughout all of your growing up and, and, and had that decision made up maybe by the time you were in high school or was it kind of a, a decision um, last minute and, and just decided that you know, maybe the military, I'll try it out? It was more of a spontaneous decision, definitely, yeah. because I was 19 when I joined. Okay. So I wanted to go to college yeah. pretty bad at the time but like I said I didn't have yeah. I really didn't know at the yeah. time how to do that I didn't have a lot of guidance as far as college when I was growing up it wasn't impounded in me to go to college so I was right. very uncertain of how to do it and um, uh, so I just spontaneously visited the Navy recruiter and um, went from there so in 2003 you and I were in the same place although we didn't know each other and then. I didn't know that yeah. Yeah. But where were you in 2003? Tell us, tell us about uh, how those events <laughs> changed your life. Uh, well, I was in a small little town in Iraq called Adiwania. Mm -hmm. uh, we were surrounded by Marines. Yeah. And um, I was there at some point, so yeah, we probably were really close to each other. But probably. Yeah. Well, did you make your way up from Kuwait to Adiwania or? I did. Okay. Yes. I, I, my unit was already there and mm -hmm. I had recently checked into my unit. I had transferred from Port Wanimi to my new command oh, in Hawaii. Wow. So oh, wow. um, I was actually checking in to meet with my command. So um, we weren't in Kuwait, but we were near Kuwait. And so I had convoyed in from there with, with some reservists. And we had okay. met with my unit, and that was very scary in a way because I didn't know anybody or what yeah. to expect. Right. So, yeah, that was very hard at the time. So Derek's a corpsman. He's, uh, he's serving the Marine Corps, you said. Yes. And he went to Iraq in 2004. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, he was injured. Yes, he was. And Derek's been on the show, so we've got to meet mm -hmm. Derek before. And Iron, his service dog. And Iron, his service dog, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we know, we know Derek on this show. Yeah. And um, so his injury, though, changed your military service. How did, how did it change it? it? It did. I mean, I was pregnant with our first, or oldest, and I had to basically travel and be by his bedside. It was a very long recovery. And... I had the most supportive command at the time. There were no issues with that at all. And, you know, I did have maternity leave, so that did help a little bit. But then once I got back to Hawaii, we started the, um, oh, I forget the name of it, the type of discharge that I, I had to get in order to, yeah. Like an administrative hardship. It was hardship a hardship discharge, discharge okay. yes. And that's what I yeah. ended up getting yeah. because Derek was really struggling without me, yeah, you know, with yeah. his recovery. So I needed to find some way to, you know, move with him. They, the, my command did try to find me orders in Texas where he was recovering, but there was nothing available. So they offered me a hardship discharge. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you survived your new husband being severely injured. I did. You survived an abrupt end to your career in the military. Mm -hmm. And soon after a couple months, your son was born. You must be pretty strong to go through all that. What do you think kept you together and allowed you to continue 
to endure? You know, that's, that's a good question because, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of severely wounded Marines at the time. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of different characters and personalities and injuries and all of the different struggles. Mm -hmm. And Derek is a very strong person. Mm -hmm. He has, um, you know, this will to move on more than anybody I've ever met before. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it made going through this so much easier. If it had been the other wow. way around, wow. it would have really made a difference. To, to go through that, you must have done yeah. something. Something must exist when then. Well, I think when you're faced with that kind of tragedy, yeah. you just, you have to move on. There's, yeah. there's this part of you that comes out, you okay. know, just you've got to do what you've got to do. It's, yeah. He's my family. Yeah. You know, he's... You're loyal he, to him. He, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And he's loyal to me. Yeah. So... You could have just walked away. You you were just married to him just, just a few months prior to that. And yeah, you could have just walked away, but you stuck by him. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, that's just not an option. I and mean, we did yeah. see a lot of that while we were there, mm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So... Wow. No, Remarkable. It, his family was there. Uh, I had a lot of support, and I think that was a large part of his recovery as well. So how do you see your military service today? Because I have to, I have to admit to the audience that, you know, I knew you for a couple of years mm -hmm. and I, I didn't even realize that you served in the military. I didn't even realize you had gone to Iraq. Yeah. It was, I remember the day I kind of figured it all out. Like, mm -hmm. you've got to be kidding me. So um, do, you, do you not talk a lot about your service? Do you not tell a lot of people about it? Or was I just a little slow to learn? Or, you know, who is Dre in a sense of a veteran today? You know, I don't talk about it a lot. Um, it's not that Derek stole the show or anything mm -hmm. like that, but, yeah. um, you know, it is hard to talk about my service when I have a husband who was severely wounded in Iraq. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's yeah. the, the conversation immediately goes to him, which is, it should. Mm. Um, but at the same time, he's always validated my service, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's never, ever just stepped up and said, mm -hmm. oh, it's all about me. He's a very humble man. He's yeah. always said, oh, but my wife, she's also a veteran. Yeah. He's always made that a priority, too. He's proud of you, I would imagine, yeah. yeah. Well, we've had your shadow box on our show before, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. we, we honor your military service. Thank you for being a wonderful mommy to your boys. And uh, <laughs> I hope that after Bram and University, uh, after you complete your program there, I hope you celebrate a lot for yourself. Thank you. We'll be back with more Veterans Voices. Welcome back to Veterans Voices. Tonight we have been speaking with our guests and you at home about an important topic, what it means to age healthfully as a military veteran. Are you a veteran with a story to tell or talent to share? If so, we'd love to hear from you and possibly have you as a guest on our veterans for a veteran's voice or as a guest on our show. Reach out and tell us about yourself. Another way to contribute is through our viewer advisory panel. This panel provides critical qualitative feedback to our show that we take seriously and read prior to planning each episode. Your voice truly matters. Please help us learn how to serve you better. Sign up on our homepage and you'll be sent a short survey after every show. We will also be posting the survey on Facebook very soon, making it easier for you to send feedback. There are many resources for veterans and their families. The following resources are also listed on our homepage. Mobility Matters offers free one-on-one -on -one rides provided by screened and trained volunteer drivers, many of whom are veterans. These rides are primarily for medical care, dental appointments, and basic necessities like grocery shopping for qualified veterans of any age. To learn more, call 1-855-234-RIDE. East Bay Hospice provides compassionate end-of-life care to terminally ill patients while offering emotional, spiritual, and grief support for the entire family. They accept all medically qualified patients regardless of their insurance status or ability to pay. They also offer free bereavement services to the entire community. Please visit them at hospiceeastbay.org or 925-887-5678. In the coming weeks, there are many veterans events you can take part in. Visit our website calendar for a full list and contact us if you have an event to add to our calendar.
Please join us in celebrating the life of my son, U.S. Army Specialist Joseph Graves, at the 11th Annual Joy Graves Memorial Golf Tournament at Discovery Bay Country Club on September 18th. Benefiting our foundation, some gave all the Joy Graves Foundation. Calling veterans of all eras, come join us for a fun and fast Veterans Day on the Delta on Saturday, September 9th. This free event is open to any veteran, any age, who loves the thrill and speed of high-performance boats. And I'm talking high-performance boats. This is a free event to all veterans. You can register online at www.somegaveall.us. Please come out and join us. Come meet numerous Pearl, War, uh, Pearl Harbor survivors on September 1st between 5 and 8 at the Concord Vet Center for World War II Mike Night. The real Rosie the Riveters, as well as many of their family members, are, will be attending this event. The Longest Road, which you saw the trailer of earlier, will be featured October 5th at the Hayward Century Theater. This will be uh, in, in association with a veteran resource fair. And so come learn about your resources. We'll give you a barbecue, so have dinner and a movie. It'll be a great time. It's over in Hayward. There's a women's veterans panel discussion on Friday, August 25th, between 930 and 11 at the Veterans Home of California up in Yonville. Learn more by calling 707-226-9898. American Legion Post 29 will host the Boys and Girls State Dinner on September 9th at 6 p.m. at the Veterans Memorial Building in Martinez. For reservations, call 925-957-1662. Please tune in and join our discussion next month on Veterans Treatment Court. And in October, we will focus on collaboration between veteran service organizations. We hope to create a healthy, productive dialogue and incorporate our audiences your thoughts on concerns regarding these topics. Our goal is to facilitate an open dialogue to give a platform for your voice. So please join us. To rewatch tonight's episode, check back on our homepage later this week or check with your cable provider's schedule for rebroadcast times. This is Veterans Voices of Contra Costa County signing off and wishing you all a relaxing evening. I would like to Thank all of our guests for being here tonight. You are an awesome group of people with great resources and great information. So this is us saying hua, hurrah, or hoo or aim high. Aim high. <laughs>